Hello everyone. Welcome to unit two of the module water accounting using vapor data. This unit is about water balance. My name is Solomon C. I'm a lecturer in water accounting at IHE Delft Institute for Water Education. After completing this unit, you will be able to describe what do we mean by water balance, the data needed to compute water balance and how to calculate water balance for a river basin. Water balance techniques as one of the main subjects of hydrology are a means of solution of important theoretical and practical hydrological problems. Water balance approach enables us to make a quantitative evaluation of water resources and their change under the influence of man's activities. Current information on the water balance of a river basin for short time intervals such as seasons, months, week, and day is used for operational management of reserves and for the compilation of hydrological forecasts for water management. Water balance studies provide an indirect evaluation of an unknown water balance component from the differences between the known components. For example, long term evapotranspiration from a river basin may be computed as the difference between precipitation and surface runoff. The study of water balance in hydrology is the application of the principle of conservation of mass, often referred to as the continuity equation. This states that for any arbitrary volume and during any period of time, the difference between the total input and output will be balanced by the change of storage within the volume. The water balance equation for any natural area such as the river basin or water body indicates the relative importance or the relative value of inflow, outflow, and the change in water storage in the area. In general, the inflow part of the water balance equation comprises precipitation as rainfall and snow actually received at the ground surface, and surface and subsurface water inflow into the basin from outside. The outflow part of the equation includes evapotranspiration from the basin surface and surface and subsurface outflow from the basin. When the inflow exceeds the outflow, the total water storage increases. An inflow less than the outflow results in decreased the storage. The water balance for any river basin or water body and any time interval in its general form may be represented by the equation shown in the slides. All the water balance components are subject to errors of measurement or estimation and therefore they introduced uncertainty in the water balance estimation which may produce differences in the left and right side of the equation. The application of water balance equation may be simplified or made more complex depending on several factors, including the available initial data, if we have data required to quantify all the input and output 
of the water balance equation, the purpose of the computation, for what purpose are we computing the water balance, the type of the body for which the water balance is computed, is it a river basin or artificially separated administrative region, is it a lake or a reservoir, and the duration of the balance time interval. Now we're computing the water balance for a yearly water balance, monthly, daily, or a different time step. In large river basins, subsurface water exchange with neighboring basin is assumed to be zero. No surface water inflow into a river basin with distinct catchment depend. Of course, assuming no artificial diversions from other basins. In this case, the water balance equation is simplified as precipitation as the only inflow and evapotranspiration and the discharge out of the basin as outflow components. Water balance method can be used to evaluate the components of the hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic cycle is a conceptual model that describes the storage and the movement of water between different spheres of the Earth, which are biosphere, atmosphere, lithosphere, and the hydrosphere. The biosphere includes all life on Earth, plants, animals, and humans. The hydrosphere includes all water on the planet, the oceans, the lakes, rivers, groundwater, rain, clouds, glaciers, and ice caps. And the atmosphere includes all the air above the surface of the Earth all the way to the space. And the lithosphere includes the Earth's crust and the upper part of the mantle. Water can be stored in any of the following reservoirs. In the atmospheres, oceans, lakes, rivers, soils, snowfields, and groundwater. And water moves from one reservoir to another via three major pathways. These are precipitation on the ground on the Earth's surface and, and on the ocean, evapotranspiration and vapor transport, movement of vapor from one place to another. Oki and Kane estimated the global water balance in their paper titled Global Hydrological Cycles in World Water Resources in 2006. Looking at their estimates, we can observe that there is more precipitation on the land surface than evapotranspiration and more evapotranspiration than precipitation on the ocean. The difference between precipitation and evapotranspiration are balanced as surface and subsurface runoff from the land mass to the oceans and as net water vapor flux from the oceans to the land surface. We have seen that the components of water balance for a river basin are precipitation, evapotranspiration, runoff from the basin and change of water storage within the basin. These components may be expressed in three different units. They can be as mean depths of water over the basin area in millimeter of water depths or as total volume of water in cubic meter or as flow rates in cubic meters per second. Expressing the water balance components in flow rates is convenient for many water management communications. However, as the computation of water balance usually 
starts with the computation of mean precipitation over a basin. The other components are usually also expressed as depths of water. Records of precipitation and runoff from network of stations are the basic data for computation of the water balance components of a river basin for long term periods. To compute the water balance for individual years, seasons, or months, it's necessary in addition to have data on water storage variations in the basins. These are obtained from snow surveys, observations of soil moisture, water level fluctuations in lakes and groundwater fluctuations in wells. To compute evapotranspiration, it's desirable to have data from evaporation pan or tanks and meteorological data on temperature, humidity, wind, cloudiness and radiation, which are used to compute evapotranspiration. The water balance equation for reserves and lakes for any time interval may be written as the equation shown here, where P is the precipitation on the surface of the lake or reservoir and E is the evapotranspiration from the surface of the lake. The inflow to the reservoir includes any surface and subsurface inflow and the outflow includes outflow from the reservoir including groundwater outflow and percolation through the dam. Since remote sensing data for most of the main components of a water balance equation are available, we can compute the water balance of a river basin using remote sensing data. The remote sensing data we need for Water balance computation are maps of precipitation, evapotranspiration, and change of storage. Precipitation and evapotranspiration data can be obtained from various remote sensing products, including VAPO. In addition to these products, we need estimates of change of water storage. To estimate change of water storage in a river basin, we use GRACE data. The Gravity, Recovery and the Climate Experiment, GRACE, refers to a pair of NASA satellites that have flown in low Earth orbit since the year 2002 to measure changes in Earth's gravity field, which are directly related to changes in the surface mass. And the surface mass signal largely reflects total water storage. Total water storage on land surface is the sum of all the groundwater, soil, moisture, surface water, snow, and ice. Scientists develop solutions to calculate total water storage anomalies from GRACE data. GRACE solutions provided as total water storage anomalies at monthly time scale corresponds to the sum of all water mass variations at the earth's surface and in the soil. That means it includes the sum of snow water equivalent, surface water, soil water, and groundwater. From these solutions, we can calculate change in storage for a river basin. If you are interested to know more about GRACE data, some references are listed for you to read in the reference list. Once we have data for the components of the water balance equation, we can calculate the water balance. If we have reliable measurements of outflow from a basin, we can evaluate if the water balance can be closed or not using data from remote sensing products. In the water balance computation exercise, we use remote sensing products to compute water balance for our River Basin in Ethiopia using vapor data for precipitation and evapotranspiration and grace data for changing 
water storage. Some of the reference materials I used to prepare these slides and for you to read more about the topics covered are listed in this slide. Thank you for your attention and I hope you gained some insight about water balance and how we can compute water balance from components of the hydrologic cycle. Hope to see you in the next unit. Till then, goodbye.